So, um, just a little words about me. My name is Joe Primus. I'm an international person. Um, I was born in Turkey, so I speak Turkish. I'm living in Switzerland for 35 years now. I'm my own consultancy company. Um, and we are active in governance, cybersecurity. Uh, we're talking about risk management and business continuity, exactly. So, uh, we are de delivering projects in that areas and also trainings. Sure, with PCB, um, but also I'm teaching in Sorbonne, Paris, so I'm coming very often in Paris and University of Geneva at the master level, and all these domains are are inside. Um, so, also an important point maybe to mention, I am the board member of ISACA in Switzerland, um, so I'm leading a chapter which is the French part of Switzerland uh, about all the CISA, SIGAIT, and all the all the stuff that you, you know about it. So, uh, as I said, feel free to ask me questions. I don't like monologues, so the idea for me is really to share information with you and maybe answer on the fly your specific questions. I will be very happy as I have a very technical background. I am in the beginning um, a polytechnic guy for, for development and then with an MBA business administration to understand the business side that is in general lacking for the engineers. So that's it. Um, this is the agenda here. We will see what's going on in Letscape. So as is situation, if it's, uh, as it happens right now about the business continuity and security, cyber security. Here we're talking about ISO 22301. I'm sure you know all these things. We'll just do a very short recap. <coughs> and then we'll talk about SAPSA. Another question, how many people here in this room heard about SAPSA? Wow, I am really happy that there are almost two people, <laughs> two persons, which is in general rare. Uh, good. When did you heard about it? Two years ago. Two years ago. Okay. So, are you applying this? Not yet. Maybe it will come. <coughs> and uh, the last part of the agenda will be the linkage between the business continuity management and information security, information system security management. So let's attack the, uh, the first part, which is the as is landscape. Okay, as you know, the frequency of attacks continues to increase, and these are the uh, latest uh, news about 2017. It's amazing to see, we're talking about, this is very interesting, this number is, we're talking about percentage, 8,500% attacks involving crop to jack, uh, jacking and increasing. So it's an increasing at a very fast pace here. And we are uh, still uh, expanding or budgeting about 27. Um, so the cost is increasing about at that rate too. So we're talking about budgets, costs, efforts that we are trying to implement in our systems so that our systems are ready for disasters and including, sure, cyber attacks, virus attacks, crypto attacks, and things like that. So knowing that uh, when there is a virus or a crypto attack which is attacking the value chain of, uh, of the organization, evidently this results in the, in the loss of confidentiality, integrity, and availability. And the, and the continuity is very linked to that, so let me ask you the question about what is the main difference between availability and continuity? Who can answer me to that? What's the main, main difference? Please, sir. Uh, I always say the difference between availability and continuity is availability is what you uh, disclose and agree in your SOA. Absolutely. And the continuity <coughs> is also uh, agreed in your SOA. However, it's often the... Uh, the, the, the Absolutely. So it's the availability under, let's say, abnormal situations. Absolutely. Availability is a normal situation, so I repeat, so it's a microphone, so this definition is also recorded. 
Availability is for normal situations and continuity problems are for disasters, exceptional situations. Availability are measured in SLA, so 99%, 999 or whatever. And continuity, as you know, we're talking about RTOs, RPOs and all these facts and figures. So, if you compare your, your demands, your big concern about top priority, is it in business continuity, continuity, confidentiality, and also integrity? Are you taking care about all these things? Or it's only continuity problems, do you think? A continuity, business continuity management system is taking care of only continuity or also integrity and confidentiality? Who says both? <coughs> Who says only one? So you're mixed. And there are some hesitations about that. In general, the continuity problem, sure, we're in this, in this session about continuity, but most of the time, the integrity is a nightmare also when it happens because there are many, many, uh, I would say, information stored. And I have some clients that their major problem is not continuity, but integrity because they can lose their whole business about it. So what happens is, historically, as, as you know, you're coming from these domains, historically these two things were not collaborating well. Uh, they are separated. It, it means that we're talking about information system, you have specialists, you have IT managers, we're talking about security, cybersecurity, we have CSOs, and they do their job. And on the other hand, you have the business continuity managers that they are doing, uh, who are doing their job very well too. But in general, they are not communicating well. So this is, uh, the IT part is seen just a purely technological stuff, and that's it. So no interaction. So lack of historical synergies between BCM, ICMM, are now, I would say, or is now changing little by little. Because people are taking into account the fact that, welcome. Welcome. No, no problem. If you can close the door, please, it would be great. Thank you. So, um, <coughs> these synergies are growing faster because these major slots in the company, so we're talking about CSO and business continuity manager, are not collaborating together. But at that time, the missing part is a methodological part. We don't have this yet. And that's what I will try to introduce in this, uh, in this presentation. So we will talk about synergies, how these two worlds or three worlds, so information system, cybersecurity, and business continuity can work together with methodology. Okay, I would like to ask one sure. <coughs> it's about the, the background of the BCM manager. The background of the BCM manager? Yeah. So your question what is... What would you recommend? Actually, first of all, the business continuity manager should understand well the business processes. For me, it's the most important part. So a big knowledge of the company. And in general, if, as it's process oriented, this person should have notions, if it's possible, of cybersecurity, but especially of IT. This I wouldn't sa have said maybe 10 years before because IT was not predominant as it is right now, but the big part of our information exchanges are now with IT, with information system. So these, these persons in general need these backgrounds and a big solidity in, um, in the nervous system, meaning that to be ready to resist to high pressure situations. This is very, very important, which is not the, the best, I would say, um, the best known characteristics of an IT manager, I would say. Yes, please. Uh, don't you think that if this person has a, a too high qualification in IT, in computer science, or depending yeah. on understanding, don't you think that they will be more focused on IT and maybe it will lose sight of the other activities of the company? Let me give you an example. You write about it. You will write about it, yes. A telecommunication company which has 90% of its subscribers coming from uh, prepaid subscribers. This, that is what is typical in West Africa. 
Yes. So ninety percent of your the programs are prepared. So it means that the business is based on the job of uh, wholesalers on the on yeah. the area. Yeah. So in that kind of situation, if you have someone who thinks that business continuity management is more the about IT only. IT. Yeah. I think you he may lose sight of one of the critical side of Absolutely. The business. I completely agree. I will repeat your question and your suggestion is that uh, the background of this person should be more IT or not and your experience is that if it's IT it can be you know dangerous because it's IT focused. Yeah. Absolutely right about it. So these profiles are not easy to find. So you need a profile coming you know uh, from the business side to understand well the processes and also have a view about IT and security which is a triple head difficult to find in general so there are different profiles coming from IT and emerging with business or coming from business interested in general it is more difficult from uh, for people coming from business to understand IT than people coming from IT to understand business in general but this is my point of view maybe you will have another point of view about that thank you right yeah Thank you for your understanding that. So here, <clears throat> this is a notion that I would like to, to introduce here. We're talking about here enterprise architecture. Again, who heard about enterprise architecture and who is applying enterprise architecture in, in their companies? Please ra raise your hands. It's a little minority. Okay, so we're talking about maybe five or 10% of the audience. This is key. Yes? You have a question? No? Okay. So this is key really to understand how the methodology will be applied throughout all the business cycle. Here we're talking about strategy. Here we're talking about organizational structures, which are also included in the 22301. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Here we're talking about processes, key, very key, so definition of processes, applications that are serving these processes and the infrastructure serving these applications and in the end all the physical uh, logistics and infrastructures serving the rest. So what does it mean? It means that if something happens here, let's imagine here, I'll do just a zoom for you, okay? So it means that this will be propagated throughout all the stages of the enterprise architecture. How do you model this? How do you express this idea of propagation? Not easy to find in the market a solution or a methodology that enables you to do that. So that will be our focus in a few minutes. Just a little recap about 22301. This chapter, you know, it's very uh, easy for you, your experienced people in this area. So it's PDCA, right? Nothing new uh, under the sun. <coughs> Planning phase. We plan, we put in place the organization, the risk management. We don't do it yet. We, we, we just only put in place. We plan all these things. Okay. So here it means that we are actions about for risk, opportunities, objectives and plans. But if you take the standard, ISO standard, it only says do this. There is no, I would say, a sort of methodological framework to say you got all this information what do you do with it nobody tells about that point so the next point is operations there we do the um, the famous BIA <coughs> as uh, as you know it's very key we do the strategy tactics sure and procedures and we exercise and test so we operate all these environments and as I mentioned here, the BIA is very key with all the facts and figures, RTOs, RPOs, by processes and sub-processes of the company. This is, these are known facts and easy, not, not a big deal. And here we're coming to the third part, performance. You monitor, you audit, you do regular audits, and you do management review. And then you improve. When you find non-conformities, you just apply the corrective actions 
and you try to manage the continual improvement and that's it. What is the way to do that? It's the famous pyramidal structure about uh, the documentation, you set up an organization. And, and where is the link about cybersecurity here? No such link in the, in the standard. You, you cannot find it easily. So let's talk about now SAPSA. <coughs> so excuse me for my voice, I caught uh, something uh, strange about three weeks ago, I'm just uh, still uh, su suffering a little bit, but it's, it's not contagious anymore, so don't, don't worry season. about it. <laughs> excuse me? It's the season now. Maybe, <laughs> absolutely. So SAPSA is um, called Sherwood Applied Business Security Architecture. Um, the beauty of it, it's open source. So you can take it, you can use it freely. You can find documentation on the net. You can buy a book. There's a book about it. It's, it's a book like that. It's uh, really heavy. And it is a methodology for developing business-driven risk and opportunity-focused enterprise security information assurance architectures. Here already we're introducing the architecture. So it's delivering security infrastructure and service management solutions that traceably support critical business initiatives. What does this mean? In general, I struggle a lot when I implement, because I also implement ISMS, so based on 2701 and all these, uh, based on NIST, uh, different frameworks, you know, you all jungle with all these frameworks, it's, it's not a big deal. And when it comes to, okay, I want to do an architecture, security architecture, and I want to trace the requirements implying different decisions in organization and technical part, how do I do that? This is SAPSA. SAPSA will enable you to do this with a traceable approach. But why we need traceability? Do you have an idea? What is the main importance of traceability? Can you give me a, a point? Yes, sir? Maybe accountability. Accountability? <coughs> yes, and mainly the fact that when the top management or the board is giving directions and they're telling you, you as a BC manager, IT manager, security, cybersecurity manager, you need to implement all these things. Well, this is your budget. In the end of the day, you need to monitor, you need to, to tell them, look, I've got this budget, the budget, I've done all these implementations throughout three years or, or a year. And it was for this business requirement. It is linked to that precisely. And the business guy says, oh, okay, I understand now why you spend your money and it's worth it with my business requirement. This doesn't really exist in general in the business continuity management. We do things in cybersecurity, but there's no link. So this enables this link. And we will see uh, in, uh, in more details the methodology. So it's comprised of, uh, of a number of integrated frameworks, models, methods, processes, including business requirements, engineering. So here we're talking about engineering. This is an engineered approach. Risk opportunity management. Here you see we're talking about opportunities. In general, in business continuity, we're talking about risks, not opportunities. So this is one of the first times that as a business continuity manager say, look, we are resolving your opportunities too. We're bringing you opportunities and this can be helpful for your business. So this framework takes about uh, also this uh, point. Security services oriented architecture, <coughs> uh, governance, security domains. We will see what it is exactly with an example too in a few minutes. And security services and performance management. So all these things are explained in an engineered way within SAPSA. How it is used, you can implement using enterprise architecture or security architecture. You can use it for individual implementations of solutions. You can integrate that with TOGAF. Uh, you're aware with TOGAF, enterprise architecture, heard, heard about that? Okay. Officially TOGAF integrated SAPSA four years ago as the official security architecture framework worldwide. So when they refer to security, they go to SAPSA. TOGAF stops at the application layer or enterprise architecture layer, not security. They, they don't deal with it. So they're complementing. So the idea here is very basic. We ask 
the questions, the basic questions of what, and we will see that it is at each layer that we ask all these questions. What are we trying to do at this layer? We will see that we have layers. Yes, sir. Sorry to be a little bit late, but I'm, no problem. I'm, let, can we go back to the previous slide? Sure. Yeah. Uh, uh, <coughs> the previous. You say seamless security integration and alignment, and I, I, I a little bit object against the word seamless because it suggests that it's seamless. <coughs> yeah. Uh, can you give an example for, let's say? Sure, it's very clear to me. Yeah. Seamless comes from the fact that it encompasses different frameworks and the whole processes of the enterprise. Mm -hmm. So when you do this approach, you, you, you don't say, okay, I will begin with SAPSA and two months later I will do TOGAF and maybe a week later I will do ITIL. Mm -hmm. It is seamlessly integrated. So SAPSA integrates all these notions and frameworks. Enterprise-wide, end-to-end. Yeah, but it's the same what COVID says about uh, COVID-5 has been based on, let's say, 80 different uh, frameworks, probably including SAPSA. So, um, yeah. And the same with, uh, with NIST. And, and Absolutely. Yeah. So let me repeat the question again to the micro. So yeah. uh, uh, participant says, okay, all these standards like COVID and pretends to include everything and like 80, 80 stuff, different stuff. You're right. Yeah. It happens that I am teaching COVID as, an, as a professional uh -huh. um, and especially COVID-5 since it was changed. There is no what I call nirvana. There is no such a world that everything is beautiful. But I apply very usually 80%, 20% rule, which means if a framework encompasses 80% of what I want and the rest which is not in this framework needs to be focused on going to 27 or NIST or whatever, I will do so. So there's not a problem for me. And the SAPSA framework, having played around 100 fr frameworks in my life, like you, I think, I can imagine. Um, you know, what, when I uh, remarked that SAPSA was the framework that uh, helped me to do security architectures, I was really happy. So it's a personal, I would say, experience I will let you explore and, and think about it, but I would suggest and highly recommend to, to, uh, to see if it's worth to do that. For me, it was okay. It's 80%, 20%, no nirvana. Okay? <coughs> so the questions are really basic ones. We're talking about what are we trying to do at this layer? So we will see what is a layer. We'll have a contextual layer, conceptual layer, logical layer. Contextual layer is the layer where the business requirements are captured. Okay. So at each layer, we are asking the same kind of questions. So what are we trying to do at this layer? The assets, goals and objectives to be protected and enhanced. Here, you begin to ask questions about business continuity. You say, okay, what are my assets? The inventory of assets, the famous one. What I want to protect. And then you will see, I will show you the linkage between two methodologies and the BIA, how you can merge the two of them. The why part is answering to the risk management framework. So the why part of SAPSA is answering to the risk management framework risk and opportunity and motivations. So why we are doing all these things at each level? To which kind of questions or risk are we responding with our answers or by investing a million dollar in a, in a business continuity solution? Why we do this? What kind of risk we are answering? To? How we do this? This is the process part. So the process is required to achieve the security at this layer. Security, in this case, includes also business continuity. The who is the organization who is involved. The people, organization aspects, roles and responsibilities, here we're talking about. The where 
is the location aspect. It can be a worldwide company with different subsidiaries. So there you define what, what, we, what we call the scope, the perimeter. Too hot? Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. You can open the door if you want. No problem. I don't know how to tackle the logistics. It's a business continuity issue here. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. So, and the where? Where are we doing? And sure, at the last time, the when. So all these questions that we're trying to answer will let us to do the security architecture. Let me give you an example. In general, you say, okay, I've done my uh, BIA, I've done my strategy, is, uh, you know, hot site. Uh, you, in terms of tactics, you decide that it's 60 kilometers away or 100 kilometers away, miles away, and you try to implement it. And you don't really propagate this business need as a technical need. How do you calculate its it's 60 kilometer. How, how, do you, how do you know that it's you know, hot, warm or whatever? Is, is that traced? In general, not. There are some papers, but in general, not. <coughs> so here, <coughs> excuse me for the T again. This is the subsa life cycle. So as the other uh, frameworks, we have a stage where strategy and plan, talking about contextual security, so business needs, strategy and plan, conceptual security, and begin the design, the logical security, physical security, and component security. And then only we implement. And then we manage and measure, which is the monitoring part. So as you see, in 22.301, these five boxes, <coughs> are expressed as only a box and it says do it but it doesn't tell how to do this so this is the idea of methodology uh, with the methodology and an in, uh, industrial way engineered way to capture all these things and implement the solutions security solutions one of the key important points here is uh, I w uh, this will be a uh, 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 available for you this uh, this kind of information and it's free uh, so you can Google and you can search it's it's no problem so um, the key point here is about business attributes this is a catalog where many people in many industries have searched the attributes and created a service catalog of business needs it means that SAPSA is based on these catalogs. Each SAPSA uh, project will begin like that, and they give you this catalog. And one of the first steps is the linkage between the business needs, people who know COBIT, right? You have business needs and the matrix for cascading things, right? It's the same stuff, it's the same methodology, but oriented security. So you don't have to think as a business continuity manager or security manager, uh, what kind of attributes I need to invent? It's all there. If you want to ag augment and enhance, sure you can, no problem. But it's in general, it's very complete. So all begins, all the journey begins with the, with, the, uh, with these attributes, <coughs> and then comes now the engineered and architecture part. This is what we call SAPSA matrix, and here's, here you see the questions that we asked: what, why, how, who, where, and when. So the what is about assets, the why is the risk management, the motivation, why we do this, why we answer all these to, to all these risks, how we do this in the process-oriented approach, the organization that is needed to implement all these things, the locations, and the timing. I invite you to think about the first example I gave in the, in the introduction. You remember I said I met a CSO, everything was under control, and he said, yeah, I have a business continuity plan, no problems, hot side, something happens on the left side, on the right side, 60 kilometers or 100 kilometers away, it's backed up. Oh, God, virus attack, what happens? This kind of problems is detected here. 
Can you tell me where exactly in this methodology that if this methodology were applied, you would immediately discover that your framework, your architecture is wrong, is not answering to your business continuity need. Where do you find it? So I will help you. What, how, when, who and where? Yes, please. So you say where, right? And somebody said how, right? Okay, you have how and where, but nobody told when. This, is, this was the missing part. When it happens, this is the question that you ask, because you are doing the security architecture step by step. And uh, the beauty of the thing is, here you see a little box, right? Just says, business drivers gives you business attributes, and these give you attribute profiling, meaning that these attributes have measures, risk attached to them. At each box, you have a tool, and this tool helps you to model your needs. And you cannot skip it. You cannot say, oh, I forgot the time issue, because it's there. You should do this. And when you do the time issue, you tackle about this problem, automatically, you find a solution. You say, oh, if something happens, this is my risk, virus attack. Where it happens, when it happens, how do I process it? And it's, it, it becomes very clear, very evident to, to find the right answer for you. So sure, uh, I'm trying to explain a methodology which is you know, explained in five days in special courses. I'm trying to do this in, you know, in five minutes, so, so sorry to be very high level. But if you want to, to dig in and to see what are the uh, different catalogs, service catalogs, and in each box, what are the tools that are proposed, I invite you to do this. It's very rich in, in terms of documentation and methodology. Now, we'll try to link these two worlds. This is the missing part that we're talking about, right? The linkage. Very easy. On the left part, you have the traditional 22301. On the right part, you have the Enterprise Security Architecture Lifecycle, SAPSA. So as you remember, this part, <coughs> which is the planning part, we're talking about business needs, right? There's a, there's a sentence that says, capture the business needs. Okay, let's do this. How do I do this? You go to the strategy and plan contextual layer, and you begin to use the SAPSA attributes for business continuity, because there's a catalog for that. And then... You go to the conceptual layer, which is the architect layer, we call it. This architect will transfer or transform all these needs, there are transformation matrices, to a architectural design problem. And when you do these tasks here, <coughs> the risk, you will go to the matrix. You remember there is what, why, who, where, and when. The risk assessment that you do traditionally in business continuity and the BIA, they are linked together in general. You will go to the contextual layer and conceptual layer at the column of the why. And there is a methodology telling you why we do this. What are the risks? What are the opportunities? so that we can answer to the BC strategies. Here I give you an example, to be concrete. Um, actually, let's take a bank. Uh, it's a financial institution. <coughs> In the contextual layer, you have the business view, conceptual architect, logical designer view. The physical part is the builder who builds the system here. And components is the tradesman, like here, if we talk about, um, let's say, the tradesmen, we're talking about bits and bytes here, like protocol, uh, TCP IP, very technical stuff at that layer. In the builder layer, we're talking about here uh, solutions, like 
SOC, Security Operation Centers, it's a solution in itself. CIM, uh, Events and you know, Correlations Management. All these solutions are derived here. So the methodology helps coming from business, telling if, if, if you take, for instance, Basel III, uh, this is a regulation in banking that uh, moved many, many companies, financial companies, imposing them to, to have a business continuity because without that, you know, no, no bank would do any, any penny about business continuity. So it was an obligation. So it comes from that regulation. The architect at the conceptual level, we will see, oh, RTO is zero or something like that, or we don't, you know, we don't tolerate any, any interruption. At the logical and designer level, we will talk about recovery services, and then comes, how do I recover it? And then comes the virtualization. At the component layer, what is the component that I use to vir virtualize? It's a virtual machine. And then all these things enables me to do continuity service. So at that level, let's come back to the uh, example that I've given you in the first time. The famous CSO said everything is under control. In his case, if he has done the, the, the homework as it was supposed to be, he would realize immediately that he was using uh, virtualization techniques with virtual machines. But he just forgot in this very complex architecture to be able to snapshot by seconds. You remember I said each second was millions of euros if something is uh, lost. So virtual or virtualization was a good thing, but he just forgot to add to the virtualization the snapshotting with one second, one millisecond, or whatever. And after he applied the subsize, he said, oh, I now it's clear to me. And he bought the solution at that level, the tradesman, that enabled to snapshot. It, it costs money, sure. I mean, you, you cannot have something for free. Uh, if, if you want to come back at one millisecond and a, and a virtual subshot, you, you pay for it. It's, it's NAS, it's backups, and things like that. But it was missing. And with that architecture, it was able to. So, um, SAPSA is able to implement the enterprise architecture, risk-driven, meaning that even if something happens in one domain, which was my example on the left side of, of let's say, in Geneva, and this is in Zurich, Switzerland, right? Something happens, it propagates. This propagation is domain, inter-domain propagations, technically we call it, and it propagates upward and upper levels to the business. So all these things are modeled with SAPSA in an engineered way. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Have a nice day.